Hi, we're live. It's 7.59. What else Clem wants to go on and this is too dark. Here's Nicole. Are we on? There we go. Hi, Cornelia. How are you? Nicole's here too. Oh, people are signing in. What a beautiful day we had. Hi, Ralph and Rosa down in you old Florida people. Hey, Karen McCoy. Hey, Karen. How are you? Just going to wait as people start tuning Patty, in. Patty, Patty Rower. And yay, we're on Calvary Tabernacle page. Right, dear? Yes, Patricia Roca. God bless Hi, you. Hi, Najee's on. Najee. <laughs> How's everyone doing? We, I just got back from the beach, so I know it was Celia, nice. Celia, God bless you. Hi, Deb. Debbie Hearts. Cece's place. <clears throat> That's Hi. Celia, our flight attendant. Ah, Barbara Gray. Yes, Marissa Mathis, God Karen, bless you. Karen, we miss you, Marissa. Hey, everybody. Elaney, how are you? Well, good news, we're going to be able to go inside, and we're up to 100, so um, inside, so we're all ready to social distance, and we got our hand wash, and our mask, My sister Donna, hi. and our temperature, so we're going to be able to go in, and God was faithful, because it looks like it's going to rain on Sunday, and he knew. Yeah, he held the weather long enough for us to get out of the parking lot yep. and into the sanctuary. So this Sunday at 10 a.m., um, again, uh, the CDC protocols will be practiced. So at the door of the main uh, sanctuary, you will have your temperature taken and your hands sanitized. Also, see, hey, also seniors will be coming in a different door. So um, yep. uh, on we'll the same side of the seating. building, and they'll have special seating. Uh, but guys, uh, we're excited about coming Angel. inside. And uh, hey, Angel, how you doing? just got to get and, this out. Um, it's distracting me. We're very excited for Paulette Polo and Mantle hey, of Power Paulette. Ministries because uh, in July they'll be getting a tent and having outside meetings. Yes, and maybe we'll and go out. We'll see. We love you, Paulette. We're just so excited to partner with you. Um, yeah. We, we're so excited to have a prophetic voice in our region and uh, just an apostolic anointing that Paulette carries. So we appreciate you. Yes. Uh, I know we probably don't say it hardly enough, but we really do. You and your team are awesome. So we just yeah, they've we been love you to pieces. And they've been able to meet, so yeah, she's thrilled. Yeah. So, uh, so we're back in the building. Praise yeah, God. God is so good. And we're Things excited. Things are opening. We're <clears throat> so why don't we, you want to open up yeah, in let's prayer? Yeah, let's open yeah. in prayer. Um, this is the Sunny and Share Comedy Hour. Yes, here and, we go. Uh, I guess I'm Sunny. I'm she. She would be Share. Uh, but we're going to open in prayer, and then Connie's got a word on our heart from Psalm 55, and I'm going to share a little bit too if we um, if we feel uh, an opening for that. But uh, but let's pray, Father. We thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that God, we're in this uh, this second week of uh, mm. 21 days of fasting and prayer. We're praying for our nation, God. We're believing things are going to turn around as as the church arises and awakes out of their slumber that we can dispel the demonic activity that is poisoning the minds of Americans. And we can begin to see a transfer of power back to the kingdom of God taken away from the kingdom of darkness. So Father, we ask in Jesus' name that that transfer of power will occur. We pray that the church, God, will now rise up and take their position and their authority mm -hmm. and begin to act like the church. God, the one you envisioned, not the one we've made it, but the one you envisioned all along. Father, I pray an anointing on Connie's word today. God, uh, her heart is so tender and so sweet. God, I pray that that transfers into every life that's listening. And we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I was, you know, it's funny, mm -hmm. not how you read something by mistake and you go, oh, wow, that wasn't what I was supposed to read, but I read Psalm 55. And you know, it's it's hard watching the news. I, I've been watching Walton's in Little House on a Prairie. Cause I, I, just, I stopped watching the yeah. news for two weeks now. Because, you know, everything that's even going on now is just so, it's crazy. You know, it's not America. It really isn't America. And my heart weeps for it because this is not what we're all about. Hey, Steve LeBay. You know? So, um, 
I started reading Psalm 55 because you know that we're praying for our nation. Yeah, okay, and we need watching. it. Hi, John. Hey <clears throat> and um, only God is going to turn this situation around. And we as a church need to be that light to shine into Amen. this this to what's going on. Yeah. So Psalm 55 says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide, hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily. We're all there. It's been three <laughs> months. You know, you a know, lot of moaning like going hell, on here. Like, well, hell is breaking loose. Like, yeah. we thought COVID was enough. You know, and those horrible shooting. And then the rioting and the protesting. It's like, how much more can we keep taking on? You know, I was vacuuming the other day, you know, because I so believe we're in the beginning of SARS. I'm like, Lord, I don't think I'm up for this end time stuff. I'm like, it's, it's, it's concerning, yeah. you know? And it's like, oh my gosh. So um, I just want to continue because of what's going on. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in the wrath they hate me. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. And a lot of people are feeling that. Yeah. You know, the fear that's been inflicted on us, True. don't touch me, COVID, right. you're right. off limits. You know, we've been walking in that fear, and now we see all this destruction going on, and we saw a death in front of our eyes. Like, I'm weighted down. I'm like, oh my God, like, what is happening? And I know we're, we're, we're it's, it's troubled, and we're all tired. We're tired. Yeah. I mean, we're done. And it's like, all our hope is only in the Lord right now. Amen. So, um, fear, fearfulness and trembling has come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I have wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. And I think a lot of us want to fly. I wish I we, could just fly We want away. to run away. And, and again, yeah. Connie's in Psalm 55. Um, she's at um, uh, um, verse 4. Verse 4. So You know, and that's, <clears throat> and I feel like, you know, God is really testing our faith. Yeah. You know, Big time. Um, I think he's preparing us for what's to come. But he's building our faith so that we can walk into things he has for us. See, how does faith grow? But by God expanding it and, and stretching us. You know, and this is really stretching us to the max. And me more than, and I know you guys, I, I'm, I'm hanging on to the Lord. Because I'm like, there's nothing more I can do but trust yeah. in God. You know, um, the, more, the devotion I read this morning in capital letters, so I feel like, oh, God was yelling at me. You know, saying, take my hand trust me amen and i think that's where we're at right now we've got to just we we can't look what's around us because if we do it really could get us into crazy you know i keep saying you know when's crazy going to be over um indeed i would rather for I, uh, it says i would fly away and be at rest indeed i would wander far off and remain in the wilderness and clem and tom want to go buy a little log cabin by the creek and, you know, I think that's what some of us in Montana, you know, I think that's, you know, <clears throat> but God in, hasn't called us to do we, that. Right. Now, <laughs> in our natural mind, we, we want to be off the grid. Um, mm -hmm. But God says that he's planted us for such a time as this, that we, we have to transform the grid into the kingdom. And that's really important, guys, that we get that, that we can transform society mm -hmm. as we know it. Instead of being modeled uh, after a worldview, uh, we can see the kingdom of God come to earth as it is in heaven. That's how Jesus taught us to pray. And this social engineering stuff is garbage. And it is poisoning and polluting the mm -hmm. minds and the hearts of, 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 of everyone we know. And we've got mm -hmm. to really get off of that. We've got to renew our minds According to Romans 12, verse 2, don't be conformed to this world, but, but be, be transformed, transformed by, by the renewing, renewing of your mind life. that you may prove what is the good and perfect will in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. We need to pray effectively the Our Father. Mm -hmm. Let your kingdom come. Mm -hmm. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen, it's pursuing guys. truth yeah, because we don't yeah. we're not seeing any truth. Amen. So we need to pursue truth. We got we need to be in God's word. 
We need to be in his presence. And sometimes when this comes upon us, you know, all this pressure of fear and all that, that's yeah, what brings us yeah. closer to God. And hey, that's Linda, what's drawing hi, us near, near them. So um, it was said, I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy our Lord, Lord, destroy our Lord and divide their tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. And that's what we're seeing right now. Um, for I have seen wickedness and strife in the city. Day and night they go around on its walls. Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in the midst of it. Oppression and, de de and deceit is not, do not depart from its streets. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me that I could bear it. And we're seeing that right now. I mean, destruction is in our streets. Yeah. You know, and God is showing me again, we're fighting an enemy. There's an enemy now that's been, re you know, COVID, I so believe the enemy of fear was released over us. And now right. rebellion, you know, with fear comes rebellion and with hate, you know, and, and the, uh, the, the, it's like they've been released. And our prayer now is we need our warring angels. We need Michael, the warring angel. We need, yeah, yeah. I mean, more now, now more than ever, we need the warring uh, angels. But God showed me is we hate what they're doing, but they're still lost and dying people. And it's yeah. so hard for us to separate that because we see the rebellion. But God's looking down on their hearts and saying, oh, if they only knew who I was. Right. So as angry as we're getting, we have to make sure that it's it's a right it's a right you know it's it's a anger that we know is not of God it's, it's, you know. What makes it a righteous anger is 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 hating the sin but loving the, the sinner. Mm -hmm. That's really important that people are loved. Now we're not condoning uh, wickedness, but what we're saying is people uh, are being deceived. They're falling under a hypnotic. De deception um, again Connie read that from that one verse it's mm -hmm. it's about deceit mm -hmm. um, and uh, oppression, oppression and, deceit. and deceit do not depart from its street so is that the people under under uh, oppression have been deceived by the enemy and promised things that they're never going to get so their oppression turns into depression and anxiety and it really turns into hopelessness. Now, God is not the God of hopelessness. God is the God of hope. So we've got to transform our streets from hopelessness to hope. How do we do that? We do that by loving the sinner and leading them to the heart of God the Father. As we lead people back to the heart of God, they're going to find out he's a good God. He's a great Father. And they're going to find out who they are in God and how he created them and what, what purpose did he create them for. And so we've got to break this, this band of wickedness here that is, is polluting the minds and hearts of our culture as we know it. And people are doing the most ridiculous things. It's senseless when you think about what's going on. It, it has no reason behind it. There's no wisdom behind it. And uh, guys... I read a quote today and it said this, that we are drowning in information, but dying of thirst for wisdom. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. I'll say that again. We are drowning in information, but we are dying of thirst for a lack of wisdom. Wow. Go ahead, Con. Yeah, and I just want to read this a little <clears throat> bit because you know how sometimes scriptures get... You know, I just want to take the gist out of what about what's happening. And it says, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. And that's what our prayer has to be more than ever. I think, again, God has a reason for everything and he knew this was going to happen. Because yeah. we literally are in boot camp right now. I mean, we're doing those push-ups. We're out in the middle. You know, like, God is really pushing our faith right now. And again, in my heart, I know yeah. he's going to do something great. No, God, God is but, pushing our faith and the devil's pushing our buttons. Yes, he is. <laughs> big time. Big, big time. Big difference. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and we have to recognize him. 
See, that's what we're warring against the enemy, not against one another. Right. And I think that's what we don't see. That's important. You know, we're not warring against all of what those people are doing. We're praying for them. You know, we're saying, God, let your Holy Spirit fall in this place. Like, look what's happening in Minneapolis where George Floyd, there's people getting saved. There's people getting baptized. Amen. That's where God brings <laughs> the good around. And that's where we really need to continue. That's why we're doing this 20, 21 day prayer fast, because that's the only thing that's going to change, change us. But we, God wants us to have a perspective of how he sees us, Amen. not what we see. Because if we go by what we see, it's hopeless. <laughs> but see, God says the battle already won, you know, and all those people need to know Jesus. I mean, why are they do? That's why they're doing it. They're, they don't know who the Lord is. They don't know right, where they can right, get their hope. Right. They don't know where they can get their peace. They don't know that they can have true freedom. See, they're fighting for a freedom that's on a, built on a lie. Yeah. Everything is built on a lie for them. I mean, the news is... I listen to the news and I'm like, people have really lost, you know, yeah. their, their common sense, you know, and that's because they're deceived. That's because they're blinded. You know, God says that, you know, when we come to know him, let the scales fall off their eye so that they can see the truth. Amen. So that's what our prayer has to be. That's what God is calling us to be. We want to be that light in this dark, dark world right now. And again, Amen. it starts with that love covers over a multitude of sin. Yeah. But do we really understand what that means? That means that no matter what somebody does to me, if I get hurt, if I get offended, I'm going to love them. Amen. I'm going to love them no matter what they do to me. Because why? Jesus loves me no matter what I do. Whether I, you know, whether I pray, if I sin... God's still going to love me. Right. And that's the kind of love God is trying to impart in our hearts. Yeah. And this is a test. Am I going to hate those people? I can't. It's not of God. Right? God, We can't hate. God is not a God of hate. He's a God of love. And the only yeah. thing that can respond is love. Amen. That's what's going to break this is love. And you keep, you know, what did you, you know, get slapped in the face, take the other one. You say, come on, take it on. I forget what movie that was in. Keep hitting. Was it Rocky or one of them? I don't remember. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to leave. You can keep hitting me all you want, but I'm not going to leave. And I think that's the persistence of what God wants in our hearts. I'm not giving right, up right. on people. Now, that's good. Um, you know, and, and again, one of the things that helps is prayer. Um, how do you break deception and darkness? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me or comes to me shall not walk in darkness. And so if you're walking in Jesus and, and, and your life has been illuminated, do you know you're a light bearer? Do you know that? You, you carry the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, which God says, according to First Corinth, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter 4, he puts that in earthen vessels. The treasure of the knowledge of God's glory is put in earthen vessels so that the glory may be of God and not of us. We're, we're stewards, we're carriers, we're ambassadors, we're light bearers, we're carrying his light, not our light. We're not, we're, there's nothing attractive in us, but Christ in us is the attraction and we've got to present Christ to individuals. As we do that, we're going to dispel. The, the interesting thing about Psalm 55 is, is Again, the psalmist is writing here about despair and wickedness is all around. It's all consuming, but he turns to God and God has an answer. And God has an answer today. God will not fail us. Amen. The Amen. question is, are we going to fail God? Mm -hmm. And so we've got to look in the mirror and ask ourselves, God, am I failing you? Not, not, not being a proper light bearer for your testimony, Christ. And, uh, and, and that's what we've got to ask ourselves. Remember, he is the light of the world. I'm not the light of the world. He is the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And those that come to him shall not walk in darkness. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful, beautiful promise from God. And so, guys, we want to encourage you tonight with that word. Remember, um, there's so much going on in the world today. And what do people lack most? Wisdom. Where do we get wisdom? According to James chapter 1, we get it from God. When any of you lack wisdom, ask of God, 
who gives liberally, but when you ask, you have to believe you're going to receive it, for he who doubts shouldn't think he'd get anything from God, right? So that's where faith comes in. Mm -hmm. Connie was talking about that before, that faith is very important, right? So it's what we're about. If we don't, yeah. if we don't have our faith, then where are we? You know, because faith is what keeps us who we are today, not our feelings. I have faith because I know Jesus died for me. I have faith. You know, it's truth in my heart, and that yeah. never changes. You know, and and another thing I read was, um, you know, God wants us our persistent pursuit after Him. He doesn't want us to be perfect. See, that's the thing. We feel like, oh, I didn't pray today and I read my Bible today. Oh, how could God? He just wants us to pursue him with all our heart. That's all he's looking for. Yeah. You know, it's the enemy that says, oh, see, you're not good enough. How, what do you call yourself? You know, like those are the things God delights when we're in his presence. God delights that we want to keep just running after him. That's what brings us to that place of safety. That's what brings us to our place of comfort that's where we hear what God wants to do in our lives, right? That's, a, that's the only place that brings us peace during Amen. all of this. Amen. And I think that's what God's trying to do with all this happening. Just yeah. keep coming to me. Just keep coming to me and I'm going to give you that peace and rest that you need. And I, I don't know about you, but I want that. I'm tired of all this <laughs> around us, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's the only way we're going to get it is to persist to be persistent you know and um i know when i want something and clem can attain for that i do whatever i have to do to get it yeah i make it happen well we got to make it so that we're constantly pursuing god more and more and more Amen. each day and we can't put a perfection way of thing on it you're washing your dishes. You spend time with God. You know, everyone, you know, with, you know, you, where the people say, I'm going to spend an hour today. We get there. It's not what God is looking for. He's looking for our heart. He's looking to be a part of our daily life. I hear more from God when I'm doing stuff around the house than what, you know, because if our mind is always on him, yeah. then it's like we have, <clears throat> then we're never alone because it's like we have our friend with us, you know, and then people think you're crazy because you're talking to yourself. <laughs> but, um, that's what our life should be, that I'm constantly talking with God. I'm constantly in my mind saying, God, what do you think about this? And, oh, God, get a load of that one. You know, I mean, yeah. even the simplest things, like when you're in the supermarket and you feel like you better get the milk, and then you come home and you didn't get the milk. I mean, God knows all those things are important to us. And he cares about everything in our lives, everything. And all he wants is our presence with him. Yeah. That's all he wants is our time with him. <clears throat> Paulette um, just posted a, 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 you know, a, a biblical principle here. You know, when God comes back, will he find faith on the earth? Yeah. It's a good question, right? Mm -hmm. um, guys, um, your belief system is going to be determined by what you invest in. Um, Connie was talking about uh, resourcefulness. In other words, if you want something bad enough, you're going to find a way to get it. Do you know that mm -hmm. we have a, an addictive personality, all of us? I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. All of us are subject to addictions. And so um, um, David in the Psalm, uh, Psalm uh, uh, 27, he, he, he wrote clearly that his addiction was God. Uh, one thing have I desired, that will I seek, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And so... Guys, what's your one thing? What's the one thing you can't live without? What's the one mm -hmm. thing you will you will tear apart Amen. heaven and earth just That's to get right. it? Mm -hmm. Guys, um, check beach your beach passes. Check, <laughs> beach passes. Oh. check your addictions. I mean, mm -hmm. what, here here's how you govern what, what you're addicted to. What what consumes your thoughts, your finances, and your time? Those three things will govern your addictions. And if God's not at the top of, of, of each one of those categories, remember, thoughts, finances, and time. If God's not at the top of the, uh, of the list of, of those three things, then we've got to check our faith. We've got to grow. And here's, there's, a, there's a dual benefit of coming to God. First of all, you will be romanced to the greatest degree you possibly can. You will be fulfilled to the highest degree. Your personal relationship with God can never be matched by any earthly experience. I don't care 
What adrenaline rush you go after, it can never be matched by what God can That's give right. you. And secondly, mm -hmm. when that happens, you're going to be like Moses that comes down from the mountain. You are going to glow. But we don't have to wear masks. We're, we're COVID free mm -hmm. when we're in God's presence. Yep. And unlike Moses, Moses was an offense to Israel because he was so beaming with God's illumination mm -hmm. and God's presence that everyone else who wasn't beaming for God was offended. Isn't that amazing? Guys, we want to make sure that we're so lit up with God mm -hmm. that people around us are going to be attracted to the light. And when they are, we're going to tell them where the light comes from. And people are so hungry for it yeah. because we're seeing such hatred against each other. Just saying, God bless you. I mean, I was watching um, police officers are having a really hard time. And this one yeah, police officer, we do. You know, she mm -hmm. just started crying because it's just been so hard. And she said she went out to get gas and the person went up to her and said, can I pray for you? I wow. mean... I, I get chills. See, she started to cry. Look what we can do for people. Just to say that. Can I pray for you? Just have a great day. Amen. People are starving for it today because it's gotten so evil. Yeah. You know, all we can do is that. And that can turn a whole day, person's day around. That can make somebody say, wow, maybe there really is a God. I mean, that's what we have to really share and it's the and it's it's the easy well some people it's the easiest thing to remember that Amen. you don't know what <clears throat> life you can change just by saying a kind word because God. we're not hearing kind words at yeah. all today yeah you know let me share something with you guys um, many of us quote this we're prophetic people okay reality is is we're pretty pathetic and here's here's what I mean. We think to be a prophetic believer is that we're going to pray for church people and we're going to have a, a, an utterance in a congregational meeting. Do you know what it means to be a prophetic person and to live a prophetic lifestyle? When you're walking around your daily life, you're going to be so God-sensitive that you're going to be able to prophesy over strangers. You're going to be able to look in strangers' hearts and God is going to give you a key mm -hmm. into, into somebody's heart that you've never seen or known before. Mm -hmm. That's the prophetic lifestyle. You know what that does? Mm -hmm. That frees the church to be God's vessel on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. We can have the best congregational meetings where people are doing backflips down the aisle and the altar is filled with believers crying out to God. And as soon as we leave that meeting, we lock ourselves up in our little private worlds and we don't care for souls that mm -hmm. are lost. You wanna live a prophetic life? Walk around and saying, God, give me a word. use me. Yeah. Give me a word for somebody today. Start mm -hmm. with one word. Mm -hmm this week mm -hmm. give me one word for an individual and it might just be god loves you yeah it's and I, as that. that was a testimony at one of paulette's mm -hmm. things um uh, one of paulette's conferences and i forget was one of the big prophets and and he told a story about he had a word from a lady to say well god just says he loves you and he goes i ain't telling her that i mean anybody can tell her that <laughs> and he goes back to her and and he says well god wants to tell you he loves you. And she goes, you know what? I prayed before I came in this church that all I need to hear from God is that he loves me. So we don't, and I'm like, we don't yeah. know when God gives us a Pretty word. Pretty simple, right? And we might think, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but that answered that woman's prayer right there. So don't doubt on what God gives for you to say to people or to yeah. go up to. And I'm going to be honest with you. I've never, have we ever, and we've been on the streets a lot when we were younger. We never had anybody said, no, I, don't pray for me. Amen, amen. Never. Like, can I pray for you? Oh, yeah. People are hungry. Amen. They're hungry more than ever now for yeah, truth. Yeah. 
So hey, Paulette, step... Paulette's lighting up the posts here with yeah. some God stuff. Awesome. Yeah. First Corinthians 16. Stephanus and his household addicted themselves to the service of the, of saints. the saints. Yep. They were committed to servanthood. Mm -hmm. Wow, that that is is that a four letter word in the church? And, servanthood. Yeah, and Stephen served servanthood. Tables. He served tables and then evangelized when he was done. Serving so, people. So don't doubt what God. And it takes baby little steps. It might be for you to just say to someone at the supermarket, "Hi, God loves you." Amen. Take. Take where God leads you, and he will open more and more doors up. This is a time to rise up. Yeah. This is a time for us to take back what the enemy has stolen from us. It's time. I'm done with all this. We can. The only thing we can control is expanding God's kingdom, and we all can do that. So why don't, let's not even see what's going on. We take one person at a time, and we keep sharing his love. But we right. rise up now in the gifting that God wants for you. And it's, it, like I said, it's a simple, kind word that can change a person. And that's all we're asking for. How many people might pray and say, this is it. I'm going to end my life, or this, or that, or I can't take you it anymore. Just don't know. And then God sends a word to yeah. them, and they start crying. It is the opportunity now. The harvest is is so ripe. People are tired. They want to hear truth. They want truth. Yeah. They want to be set free from this fear. They want to be set free from this bondage because everybody, I, I, we're in bondage right now. Our country's in bondage and we have the answer. We can give the answer. And all we need to do is take that little step of Amen. faith. Amen. Not a big thing. He's not expecting you to save a thousand people. <laughs> One person. We can't, one person yeah. at a time. Yeah. 12, again, 12 disciples are who we are today. They transformed the world uh, so, because they were faithful. So that's what I'm encouraging for you to do. As you're praying Amen. and we're praying for our nation, we can be the start of that change yeah. by sharing God's love and being kind to one another. That's something we can start today. Right now. And be kind to each yeah. other. Yeah. And we start, sometimes you have to start at home because COVID has really, like, you know, Three months in this house has been nuts. But we need Amen. that. It's a simple thing to do. Yeah. And I think you will be more than amazed and blown away when the times we've gone out on the streets and got, like we'd say, oh, my God, and how much blessed you are in return. Yeah, guys, because just you see doing your daily, you're blessed. Doing your daily thing. Um, if you're God-sensitive, um, I mean... You can hold the door for somebody. Uh, you can help somebody carry something. Now I know this yeah. this COVID nonsense is is, is yeah. just destroying that sense of what can we do for people. But there's still things we can do. I'm gonna give you another testimony mm -hmm. on my Cranford page. This lady pulled up to the Dunkin' Donuts, and this guy was a miserable dog behind her, beeping and all kinds of stuff because she assumedly cut before him. You know what she did? She paid for his coffee. She goes, I'm not going to let him upset me. I'm not going to let this change my world. I'm going to bless him. Kind word turns away wrath. Yep. Right? She paid for his thing. She goes, I don't care. Maybe he was having a bad day. It's those simple <laughs> little things that we can do where people might go, wow, maybe there really is a God. Yeah. They're looking. They're searching. Responding in a different spirit. Yeah. Um, in, in the opposite spirit of the world. Um, mm -hmm. We respond out of the kingdom spirit. Just want to give a shout out to Tony Ward, my friend. Hey, Tony. Miss you, buddy. Yes. Um, and I miss hugging you guys. I miss I hugging know. everybody. And we're so. going to hug. None of this like, oh, we're never going to shake hands again and all that kind of. We're. Yeah. God, when it's time, I'm not saying we have to, you know, we're going to be wit and wise in God, but I'm not going to stay in what they want to keep us in bondage to. Amen. Amen. You know, we're, we're set free from that. We are free indeed. Yes, we are. Guys, uh, there's a lot of posts. I love how you guys post back and forth and you encourage one another and uh, you add comments um, yeah. because uh, I like that this is interactive and, and I want to encourage you. Um, uh, there's there's some key things that I think you need to be involved with. One of them is Paulette's ministry on uh, Tuesday nights. Um, I believe it's at 7. Um, and, and I'd like you um, to be a part of that, um, to be encouraged with prophetic uh, words and free worship. Um, and again, she's going to be bringing the tent back. 
uh, in July. And um, so that's going to be very exciting for the outdoor meetings on Tuesday nights. Uh, but she'll also inform you of some of the other things she has. She has mm -hmm. a lot of round tables, a lot of uh, some of the voices um, of our nation, the prophetic mm -hmm. voices she does um, uh, um, uh, virtual meetings with. And, and you can glean a lot from that as well. Um, but and I, we're asking God what we should be doing. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, I mean, we're seeing how this is. And, you know, we, we got to get real with each other. We've got to yeah. talk, we've got to share our burdens, we've got to help each other through things, we've got to talk these things out and, you know, really become part of each other's lives and help Amen. each other, Amen. you know? So pray yeah. because God has a new thing for us and we don't want to go back. Amen. Really We're not important. going back to the mundane things. Well, guys, so. um, you know, this Sunday we're going to be meeting inside. Yeah, because he uh, upped up to 100. Okay. Our, our 10 a.m. service will be inside. 10 to 11. We're going to, we're only one hour because we're going to wear the masks inside. We're going to follow the CDC protocols we've been practicing in our parking lot meetings. Yeah. Um, you'll have your temperature taken at the door and your hands will be sprayed with hand sanitizer. And then you'll be ushered to um, a seat um, mm -hmm. with social distancing. Uh, we'll have a one hour service and uh, we just, Want to be a blessing in your life. Again, if you need anything, please call us. Uh, I will be in the church office tomorrow. Our yeah. church staff will be uh, there. We are staffing uh, the church office two days a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, for now. Um, we'll expand that uh, when the time comes. But for right now, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. The church office number is 908-709-9600, 908 908-709-9600. Also, uh, check us out on, on the web, uh, ctnj.org, our website, and there's a church app. CTNJ uh, is our church app. You can go to the App Store and get that. Um, but spread the, spread the word that we'll be meeting inside. Uh, yep. We're starting our inside meetings again, and I'm very happy and excited about that. And uh, you know what, guys? Uh, we're going to pray now. Um, yeah. um, we... Um, but ask uh -huh. God, I'm mm -hmm. praying for God to give you dreams tonight. I'm praying God to give you a prophetic That's word. That's a good prayer. Put um, a piece of paper by your, you know, God's going to wake you up. He's done that to me and I oh. climb drives and nuts because I put my phone on and I can't see what I'm writing. Yeah, the light goes because on. Because you're going to forget. But I'm believing God is going to show everyone where he has them and he's going to give you a word just for you. you and guys. if you're struggling or, I mean, we've been, you know, I'm going you're through a little dreams. bit. You're getting dreams. She Go just ahead. she just released God dreams into your life. You are going to dream God dreams. Amen. And he's going to walk you through this. He's not going to leave you. He's going right. to take you by the hand because none of us are alone. And he's going to talk to you tonight. Be ready. Be ready. He's going to show you some awesome things. Amen. Guys, we're going to we're going to uh, close it out early tonight. Um this is what was on our heart. And again, mm -hmm. it's not about time. It's about substance. So we want to engage you and have you engage us and for us to do life together. But more importantly, when we're doing life outside, that we truly become a prophetic people and ask God to show us Amen. who he'd like us to give a word to and what that word might be. Amen. Amen. And Clem's going to, I've been watching a spider that keeps going up and down over there that he's going to have to. Oh, I, I'm he, the I'm the spider here. guy for the house. Okay. That's why I haven't been. <laughs> so I have to kill the spider. I got to get off him. and kill the spider. Because he's right over there. There's pestilence in the home. <laughs> We've got to get rid of the pestilence in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, let's you pray. pray. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that you are more than we could have ever hoped for or asked for. And you actually said that, God, in Ephesians. <laughs> You said you would, God, you would exceedingly abundantly bless us more than we could ever hope or ask. God, we receive that right now. And we receive the stirring up of our dreams to be controlled by you, to be filled by you. That the night watch, even as the day watch belongs to you, the night watch belongs to you too. God, you are 24-7. And we want you to be our addiction from this point forward. Every other thing, God will be eradicated that contends with you and challenges your place in our lives. May we be the people you envisioned us to be. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Guys, have a good night and be blessed. God, bless God has great things for you. Amen. amen.